So we're here with uh, Kelly Corgett, 801 Mountain Rider, demoing the uh, 850 Skidoo E-Tech Turbo. And uh, first day out on it. Uh, what's your thoughts, Kelly? This thing is crazy. I cannot believe it. We run uh, some turbo sleds in our group and the bottom end power, absolutely zero turbo lag at all. I mean, this thing, you give it gas and you're going, the boost comes on nice and smooth. Um, we're about 9,500 feet up here in Wyoming right now. And this thing has not missed a beat today. And uh, big shout out to 80 Triple S Motorsports down in Ogden, Utah. They're, uh, they're letting us demo this thing today for our group. And we haven't, it hasn't missed a beat everywhere we've gone. Um, it just goes and it just pulls. Um, going up hills, down around trees, in the trees, tight trees. This thing is crazy. The bottom end, I have to agree with all the guys from Skidoo. I'm not Skidoo paid for by Skidoo or Skidoo Rider, but those guys are what they're saying on this thing is, it is true. The bottom end power on this thing is just, it's, it's just like a factory sled without a turbo. And I think it's even a little bit better. Um, we've got a couple of stock sleds with us today and uh, I've been riding that and this, and it's just, this thing is just, it just doesn't, want to miss a beat. Um, one of the things I really like about this sled is it doesn't, it doesn't like just hit hard like the aftermarket turbos do when they kick in. It just is a nice, easy, and then the power comes on on the top end and it just wants to pull and go. It doesn't ever even hiccup. RPMs are consistent all the way through. Um, we basically unloaded it from the trailer and uh, in the parking lot and haven't done anything to it. So it's basically, I think it's got right around 110 miles on it, um, 120 miles, but uh, and it's not even broke in yet. So I, this thing will be crazy, crazy. Um, so, so far um, out of the group, we've had three guys ride this sled and it they are way impressed. We've had guys, small guys, big guys, and this thing does not want to stop. It just wants to go. And uh, I can't say enough for the expertise that Skidoo has done on this sled. Again, bring it to the next level. And uh, that innovation they have, I mean, it was first thing, you know, the shot a couple years ago, that was a game changer for me. Um, bad shoulders and now the first factory turbo with a warranty from the factory from Skidoo. And they've nailed it. And uh, it's gonna be interesting to see what happens over the next year. Um, with this sled, um, you know, get all these guys that have the half year on these and all the information back to Skidoo. They'll make a few changes and it's going to be, it is a game changer. So um, Kelly, uh, talk about a couple of the things that, uh, that while it's a great sled, obviously there are a few things that we noticed today that um, would be, you know, wish list stuff for us on it uh, for the snow checks. Yeah, so honestly, the first thing, it only came in the one color, uh, mid-year, uh, yellow. And it's a bright yellow. And I've had yellow sleds before, my 15 T3. Um, so it'd be nice to have um, a couple different variations on the color uh, on the snow check. Not just one or two, but you know maybe three, four color options that you can do from the factory um, on the snow check. The other thing that's really, I mean, yeah, I know it's a turbo sled and you don't need it, but when you get back in the back country, You've got your pack. The glove box is nice on the other 850s to put like your phone or a head sock or an extra pair of gloves because it keeps them warm. Um, that's something that we've noticed. I, I understand they're trying to save some weight. I think there's other places that they can save some weight um, on these sleds. The, uh, the, uh, I really. Talk about the can. About that, but back to the can there. The, could lose some weight. I know why they've done it. They have to do it for the EPA, um, for the noise and stuff, but the aftermarket group, I think they're going to be a couple cans that come out. They'll shave, you know, an easy 10 to 15 pounds off that sled. It's gonna be, it's gonna be interesting. They've gotta work with the back pressure because there is back pressure sensors in the pipe, the, the factory pipe. So um, it's, it's, it's crazy. The other thing I've been, we've been beating this thing all day and it's got that new belt temp sensor in it. Not one time has that alarm gone off or the belts got hot. Um, I mean, it's not super deep today. It's not like two feet powder day, 
but we've been pushing this sled and i mean somebody's on it non-stop all day um what do you think about the suspension kelly you ride a free ride so um the suspension on this i think is i wish they had the free ride um kind of like the expert does um, they've got the new front end shocks up front and so far in the back country it's, it seems okay um the, i wish the rear skid had the the kyb piggybacks on it to come on the free ride and the expert um i think that would be something that this sled should have i mean you're, you're paying for that for the uh, performance you need the performance in the suspension too so i think the rear skid um and you know it'd be nice if skidoo would finally figure out how to get rid of the torsion type system but it, i hopefully that will come out the next big technology invention i mean it's the only sled left that has a torsion bar rear skid so well great thanks for talking to us today kelly from eight one mountain riders Mountain Riders here today uh, with Kelly Corgett, uh, rider of the 850 E-Tech Skidoo today. And uh, he had a couple more comments uh, after riding a bit more today that uh, we wanted to just mention in part two of our series. Kelly? So another thing, you know, there's a lot of comments on the web about, oh, you know, these guys down at sea level, the horsepower, all that stuff. Well, they don't understand what we have to endure when we're at nine, 10,000 feet we are losing so much power that is what is so crazy about this because even where we're at today we're still losing a little bit of horsepower because we're above 8,000 feet this thing is like crazy you go get, hop on a, um, a stock sled and you ride it up here and then you hop on this and you're like holy cow this is what a, this is what it feels like to have 165 horse underneath you it is it is amazing the other thing that uh, is would be nice is you know, some of the guys out there, they're, they're switching over to the little bit narrower track, the less flex edge track. And on this, um, I would, again, you're paying money for an expert sled that has a turbo. Um, give us track options, you know, give us a 15 inch non-flex edge track, keep the T-Motion there, but that 15 inch narrower track that's non-flex edge, um, it, it just, in these type of situations and trees and stuff, it just, it carves like butter. Kelly, have you tried uh, the uh, strap uh, limiter uh, in the long or the short settings? Um, I have not. That's something that I've never really played around with much. And from what I understand, I mean, yeah, there's a purpose for it. And I wish it was an option that you could have from when you do the snow check. Hey, yeah, I want the limiter or I don't. I just think it's something that, yeah, some guys like it, some don't. And the guys that don't like it never play with it. So I just think it's something that gets in the way with your feet. Okay, thanks a lot. Uh, Kelly Corgett again with 801 Mountain Riders.